My name is Javier Hernández and my nickname is Chicharito. Alright guys, Dominic here for Kick Guru, and today we are checking out AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution feature. That's right, today is the launch of the company's long-awaited upscaling technology, and I was lucky enough to be able to test it out early and let you know my thoughts. If we dive straight into it then with a look at how FSR actually works. In-game, you'll be presented with a list of four different FSR options. You've got the Ultra Quality mode, you've got Quality, Balance, and then Performance. Each of these modes renders the game at a different internal resolution, so the Ultra Quality mode uses a 77% render scale, the Quality mode uses a 67% render scale, and so on. Essentially then, FSR takes that image at the lower render resolution, applies both its upscaling algorithm and a sharpening pass, and then re-outputs at the target resolution. It's also key to point out that this is a spatial upscaling process, so there's no machine learning, and as it is entirely shader based, that's why it works with both AMD and Nvidia GPUs. AMD is also keen to point out it is not a temporal solution, and as the FSR pass takes place after anti-aliasing already happens in the graphics pipeline, it can work with any form of AA. As of today, the 22nd of June, FSR is available in these seven games, with plenty more listed as coming soon. In this video then, I'm going to be taking a look at Godfall, Anno 1800 and Terminator Resistance to show you both the quality and performance boosts that FSR can offer. Just before we get into it then, it's important to note that for all the in-game footage you're going to see in this video, that was captured with Elgato's 4K60 Pro capture card. All the performance data you're going to see as well was benchmarked completely separately, so not at the same time as I was capturing the footage, so as not to affect the results in any way. I also use an RX 6800 XT, as well as a press driver supplied by AMD for all game capture. Let's dive into the image quality comparisons then, starting with Godfall. As a best case scenario for FSR, here we're looking at the ultra quality mode versus native 4K. First impressions are certainly positive, and you'll definitely be struggling to tell the two apart. As we look closer though, and as the image is on screen for longer, some differences do begin to appear. What I really mean is, objects do look slightly softer when using FSR Ultra Quality Mode, as we can see here with this sort of upside down triangle boulder, while the detailing on the large pillar isn't quite as sharp as native. This certainly becomes more obvious when zooming in, where you can also note a difference in clarity to the leaves on the tree, but I'd still say the overall difference is visible if you're just comparing the two full-size windows. You do have to take a moment or two to notice it though, and even then, the quality certainly isn't bad. The difference between the quality and ultra-quality modes are less obvious though, and here you really have to get in quite close to see a slightly sharper image on the right here, which I think is just about noticeable when looking at this spherical object in the midground. Bringing back 4K native, however, it does become clear we are looking at a softer overall presentation when using FSR quality. That being said though, quality mode is rendering at 1440p resolution, so if the technology is working at its most fundamental level, 4K quality should give us a better overall image than native 1440p upscaled to 4K. That's what we can see here, and it is certainly close, but I do think 4K quality mode gives a less aliased image overall, which we can see more clearly when we zoom in. If you want a boost to frame rates, FSL quality will look slightly better at 4K than a 1440p image displayed on a 4K screen. Likewise, while FSR performance mode, which renders internally at 1080p, looks noticeably worse than 4K native, it is a better looking overall image than a native 1080p presentation, meaning that, so far, FSR is improving on the visuals when compared to just manually lowering your resolution. There is another comparison I want to make though, and for that we'll move to a new scene. Godfall uses Unreal Engine 4, which natively supports a temporal upsampling feature. Here we're comparing that temporal upsampling feature set with a 77% image render scale, which is the same render scale as FSR's Ultra Quality Mode. Now, this is again a very tricky comparison to be able to notice the differences, but I would say that the UE4 upsample looks fractionally sharper. However, 
it does come with a caveat of some noticeable shimmering as a result of its temporal nature. There is still a little bit of this visible with FSR, but nowhere near as much. Likewise, when comparing FSR quality mode to a 67% render scale, both of which share the same internal resolution, Unreal's implementation is just about sharper overall, but that shimmering effect again does detract from the overall presentation. So for me, I would prefer to use FSR when gaming. One thing I do want to stress though, is it's much easier to notice differences between the different image quality settings when you're sat looking at a static image. Once you introduce motion though, you start running around and actually playing the game for instance, everything gets a lot more fluid and chances are you're much less likely to spot the differences between native resolution and ultra quality mode for instance. Couple that with the raw performance numbers which we can see here, I'd say that the ultra quality or quality modes would be well worth using. Ultra quality for instance nets an extra 43% performance compared to native 4K, while quality mode is an impressive 66% faster than native resolution. Comparing quality mode to native 1440p though, shows about an 8% reduction in frame rate even though both render at 1440p, and this is due to the extra stage FSR adds to the render pipeline. It is still very good though, and if you're really happy to use performance mode, that gave us over double the frame rate of native 4K. I do also want to touch on 1080p though. One thing we know from testing DLSS for instance, is it works best at higher resolutions, and the same is true here. With fewer pixels to begin with, any upscaling technology can only do so much to produce a good looking final image. That's immediately obvious when looking at this image here. We don't even need to zoom in, as even with ultra quality mode, the player's armor is noticeably softer here, while the path and grass are also much sharper at native resolution. Switching out to quality and balance modes, things are even softer here. We'll touch on performance in a minute, but you would definitely have to weigh up how much image quality you are willing to sacrifice to boost your frame rate. I would also have to say that Unreal Engine's upsampling feature provides a better experience at 1080p when comparing a 77% render scale with FSR Ultra Quality. Yes, you do still get that temporal shimmering, which you can see in the trees here, but honestly, I'd rather use this as it is noticeably sharper. As for the 1080p performance numbers then, we can see that FSR doesn't boost frame rates quite as much as it did at 4K. We can see a 20% boost when using the ultra quality mode for instance, while quality mode nets an extra 29% performance over native 1080p. Again, it does come down to your priorities, but personally, if I were gaming at 1080p, I'd rather use Unreal's temporal upsampling, and if I did use FSR, I wouldn't go beyond the ultra quality mode, though of course, that is my opinion. Moving on from Godfall though, it's time to take a look at Anno 1800. I must confess, I've never actually played this game, but I fired up a quick game in the sandbox mode to take a look at the image quality. Starting at 4K, once more ultra quality mode is doing a great job against native 4K. Even when zooming in, the two are certainly very comparable. I'd say that the barrels dotted about the place do have slightly more definition in the native 4K presentation, but things are definitely looking good for FSR. In fact, I would say it's not until we use FSR balance mode where the softness becomes a bit more obvious, but even then, it's still a great looking image compared to native resolution. When we move the in-game camera a lot closer to the building, FSR still holds up really well against native resolution. The main thing I noticed here was actually the small fence at the back of the image, with the wood looking slightly thinner and more aliased when upscaled with FSR, while the grass behind it does also look a little softer, but honestly, I do think that is being quite picky. We can also see that the FSR quality mode, when set with a target resolution of 4K, is producing a better looking image than native 1440p, upscaled to 4K. Once more though, the differences aren't massive, but we can see the wooden roofing looks a little bit sharper on the right hand side, as do the barrels and fencing. So if you were already dropping the resolution to improve frame rates, FSR will be the better option. If you're moving about the map too, chances are the differences between these image quality modes will be even less noticeable, as we're showing here using the built-in benchmark. 
This is even slowed down to just 25% of the original speed. And even then, I'm finding it really hard to spot any differences as the images are moving. Performance scaling then is also generally similar to Godfall, with a 39% boost over native resolution when using ultra quality mode, while that increases to 67% if you use the quality preset. Quality mode is also just 7% less performant when compared to native 1440p, a difference which is well worth the extra sharpness in my book. The last game I want to look at today is Terminator Resistance, and this title shows a potential positive for FSR, as the character models aren't the sharpest here. FSR, however, adds a sharpening pass alongside the upscaling algorithm, and that can result in a slightly more detailed appearance here. Looking at Colin's face here, for instance, we can see his forehead and cheeks look more weathered, with the creases of his skin also having that bit more definition when looking at the FSR Ultra Quality Mode as compared to Native. Of course, if you really wanted to, you could sharpen up the Native 4K image as well, but the benefit of FSR doing this alongside its upscaling algorithm is that you also get an increase to performance. Moving on to this outdoor scene now though, it's again getting very hard to tell these two images apart. The texture quality in this game isn't amazing, but once more it's the added sharpening which just draws the eye and gives what I believe is the more detailed image when looking at FSR. There are of course limits to that, with the balance mode for instance noticeably losing detail as we switch over, but the flip side is we get the clearest win yet for FSR quality mode when compared to native 1440p. Remember, both of these are rendering at the same internal resolution, but FSR's upscaling and sharpening just adds back a ton more detail which is visible all over the scene, from the rocks in the foreground to the fencing in the background. Likewise, I'd also say that you can get away with FSR at 1080p, as image quality is generally comparable to native 1080p. The downside though is some noticeable shimmering on this overturned rail carriage in the centre of the screen, but you may well consider that a price worth paying for the boost in performance. I do also want to compare FSR once more against Unreal Engine's temporal upsampling feature, and it's definitely looking good for FSR here. Comparing ultra quality mode to an upsampled 77% render scale image, I'd say the wooden beams look more detailed when using FSR, with more discernible texture to the hanging fabric as well. We can see that both upscaled implementations are exhibiting a bit of shimmer though, so we would have to put this down to the pre-existing temporal anti-aliasing in this game, which can also show itself in FSR. Lastly, to give you an idea of the performance numbers for Terminator, this game does seem to yield slightly better results than the other two titles we tested. At 4K for instance, Using the ultra quality mode instead of native resolution boosts frame rates by a full 50%, which certainly isn't bad when I'd say it also looks slightly sharper overall. Quality mode meanwhile isn't far off double the performance of native 4K, though it is also 11% less performant than native 1440p. Again though, that is certainly a price worth paying in my opinion, as 4K quality mode is clearly superior to a native 1440p image. So then, that really is going to do it for this video on AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution feature. It's launching today with 7 games already supporting the technology, but plenty more titles are promised to be on the way. Summarising the general image quality though, I definitely have to say it surpassed my expectations. Doing close crops on the AMD slides from their Computex keynote definitely didn't give me that much hope as they did look like FSR was going to be slightly blurry, but thankfully I do think the technology is better than the impression given by those slides. At 4K for instance, ultra quality mode is generally comparable to a native 4K image. I expect in most games that you will be able to tell it's not quite as sharp as native 4K as we saw in Godfall, but it does also depend on how sharp the game looks to begin with. What is certainly more clear though, across all three games I tested, using FSR's quality mode at 4K definitely looks better than rendering a native 1440p image, but upscaling that to 4K. That means if you are already running a lower than native resolution to boost frame rates, 
using FSR instead will give you about 90% of the extra performance you get, but with added detail and sharpness too. I'm not going to sit here though and say everything is completely perfect, and that is especially the case if you're a 1080p gamer. There, personally speaking, I wouldn't go past the ultra quality mode, as things do get blurry quite fast. I would also have to say that FSR isn't clearly better than Unreal Engine's temporal upsampling feature. The image quality is certainly comparable, but in Godfall for instance, FSR is slightly softer. The caveat to that temporal upsampling feature though, is it introduces a fair amount of shimmering, something which is occasionally present with FSR, but nowhere near as noticeable as with Unreal's implementation. The obvious benefit to FSR though, is it can of course be used in more games and engines than just Unreal Engine 4. As we know, many games right now don't have any form of upscaling technology at all, so it's definitely an added bonus if you can use it in other titles where Unreal Engine's temporal upsampling isn't available. So what we have overall then is definitely a very good addition for gamers. I'd say honestly that most people would struggle to tell the difference between a native 4K image and 4K when using FSR Ultra Quality Mode, and that's especially the case if you're actually running around playing the game instead of pixel peeping. It is going to be really important for AMD to get FSR into as many games as it can though, as the current list of 7 games really is lacking a killer title in my opinion. Far Cry 6 and Resident Evil Village are promised to be coming soon, but honestly who knows exactly when that's going to be. Balanced against that, when DLSS first launched it was only in one game, and DLSS 1.0 really was not very good at all, so in my view it's only fair to give AMD a bit of time here. It will also be really interesting to see how FSR support on Nvidia GPUs pans out, as that's something we unfortunately just ran out of time to test today. But if you do have an Nvidia GPU and end up testing FSR today or this week, please do let me know how you get on. Anyway though guys, that really is going to do it for this video. So if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up. And as always, let me know your thoughts on FSR. Are you going to be enabling it in some supported games? Or are you just waiting for it to come to a game you actually play? Do let me know your thoughts. Why not subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell. And come chat with us over on Discord as well. Our server is linked in the description below. While you're there, you can also find a link to our merch store. And why not consider backing us on Patreon, where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic for Kikiru, and I'll see you in the next video.